Hello everybody, Yellow Mustang here again with another Roblox scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be doing pathfinding because Roblox has updated the pathfinding service and the syntax has changed a little bit since my last video. So today we're going to be reviewing what has changed and how to properly use it. Today's scenario is going to be um, this figure in a neighborhood essentially and our goal is to have him walk through the houses and such with him minding the walls so we don't want him to run into anything we want him to smoothly you know use the doorways use the stairs and we will accomplish that through pathfinding believe it or not alright so let's go ahead and get started with a uh, script okay we will first define our local variables as usual so we'll do local human equals script uh, parents wait for child humanoid okay Local torso equals script up parent. Wait for child torso. Okay, so essentially this is going to wait for uh, the the humanoid and the torso to load into this character, and then assign these values to these variables so we can reference them later. The next variable we need is the path variable, so we'll do path game get service pathfinding service. Okay, and then we want to create path. So you can leave this. Um, the way it is, but if you're so if you're using like a normal sized Roblox character, then this is fine. But if you're using a larger character or a smaller character, then you're going to need to actually um, give some parameters inside the uh, create path. So if you need to adjust the defaults, this is how you do it. So local path args equals array dictionary array, and the first variable is agent. Uh, height equals uh, integer, which is going to be five studs in our case because our figure out there is five studs tall. And then we're going to do the next one, which is agent radius, which is essentially um, how wide the character is from the center point. So our character out there is four blocks wide. As you can see, the torso is two two arms is one so this is four wide if your character is wide in the front also you'd wanna take the larger of the two values so as you can see this is only one stud in this direction four studs in this one so we're gonna go with the bigger number and um, set that as two because the radius is half of the diameter which would be the full thing but this is just half so it's two okay and then the last variable we need to declare in here is agent can jump and we will set that to true in this case. So again, to reiterate, you do not need to do this if your character is a normal size, but if you have a different size, whether it be smaller or larger, then you do need to define this. So we will now put path args inside of this, and then we need to actually um, compute the path with our starting distance and our ending distance. So we'll do path compute async and then the starting position will be torso dot position, right? And then our ending position will be vector three new zero 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 just for now, just as a placeholder. And then we want to get the waypoints. So local waypoints equals path get waypoints. Okay. So that's going to give us a um. A bunch of points on where to get to the um, the end position from the starting position so essentially this waypoints variable is now an array we need to loop through the array to tell the guy to walk to each point essentially so we're gonna do four blank uh, four underscore and waypoint in in pairs uh, waypoints do so this uh, for loop is going to loop through our array of waypoints each waypoint the current waypoint that we're on is going to be waypoint this is normally the um, the index number of the for loop but we don't need it in this case so we'll just set it as an underscore because we're not going to use it so now we need to have the um, the humanoid to actually move to the waypoint so we'll do human move to waypoint uh, position and then that will uh, move it to the uh, the current waypoint in the loop um, and then we want to pause the loop. So we want to do human move to finished wait to. 
So this is going to pause the script until the human actually uh, gets to this waypoint that it's walking to, so it doesn't run through the whole loop super fast. We want to run through the loop one point at a time slowly, giving the character enough time to walk to each point. That is what the wait is for in this. It's going to wait till this move to function fires, this event fires, then it will allow the script to continue using the uh, wait. Um, I put a 2 in the wait because um, the maximum amount of time I'm going to allow this to pause is 2 seconds. So if the character gets stuck somewhere, I don't want the script to pause forever and uh, not carry on. So we will give it a max wait of 2 seconds, which should be more than enough time because the points are going to be fairly close together. Um, and one more thing before we move on. We want to um, also want to detect if the character needs to jump. So we'll do if waypoint dot action equals inum dot waypoint action dot jump so if the waypoint um has the jump value in it then we're gonna have the uh, the human jump human dot jump equals true yeah good so now he will jump he will jump if he needs to, and then move to the waypoint, and then when the waypoint finishes, then we will continue. Um, so far, this looks good. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, as you can see, he's moving. Walks through the, the house and uh, finds a stopping point, and there, that's that, pretty much. That's, that's the basics to the... Um, to the uh, pathfinding service. Let's name the script AI. So, just to um, recap again, you by no means need path args um, if you're using a normal sized character. So, if you have a normal sized character, we can comment this out. You can have this just be uh, create path with nothing in it. It'll it'll work just the same. See, this guy works perfectly fine without it also. So um I guess I guess that's the basics for pathfinding for now. Um I guess I can go ahead and show you Okay, so now that we got him uh moving to uh the middle of the house there, let's have him do something a little more practical. Let's make him a little more lively. So we're going to make him, we're going to change this value um, every so often so he will randomly walk around like a, um, a normal person would. So um, we're going to accomplish that by doing magic. So let's do function move end. So put that whole thing in a function so we can loop it easily. And uh, we'll do while wait, I don't know, three seconds do move. Okay, so um, every three seconds we're going to call the move function and then it's going to run through this whole function. Then it'll wait another three seconds and have a move again, essentially. So um, in order to make a move randomly, we need some uh, some random variables in here. So let's do some, some math. So we'll do... Uh, ran, random x equals math.random uh, negative 100, 100, yeah, that's fine. And then for local z also, rand z equals math.random negative 100, 100. Okay. So now, let's see, we need to get the uh, the position that we want them to move to. So we will do local goal equals torso position plus factor three new uh, rand x uh, zero for the y because obviously you can't fly up or down and then rand z okay so um it's going to give us a goal integer value of the uh, the torso's current position plus these random numbers so it'll give us a random point to walk to based on where the character is standing at okay so now we put goal in here and we should be good to go and see if this uh, works or blows up 
Do, 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 do. Okay. All right, and he's off. Where is he going? Who knows? Standing over here. Okay. Stands over there. And as you can see, he, uh, he obviously can uh, just walk around the buildings there. So that's pretty good. So he's, he's navigating uh, by himself now. Uh, perhaps 100 is a bit too far because this base plate we're on is uh, it's pretty small. So we'll just do it. Uh, uh, what do I, let's do it 15. So we'll do uh, 15 studs. It's pretty small. We'll keep them within our little play box there. Um, one thing I did miss with this is um, sometimes the path is going to uh, not be able to find the uh, end point. So we'll do if uh, path.status equals to enum dot path status uh, dot success then so uh, path dot status is going to tell uh, is going to tell you path dot status is going to tell you if the path can be successfully completed or not or if the point is like too high or something or too far away like there's no there's no possible way for the character to get over to that point then it's going to return uh, a status of uh, failed or something like that. So only if the status is successful, then we're gonna have him walk to the um, the actual end of the path. So we'll do else. We will just have him uh, human move to move to um, goal, and that's that uh, same position up there. So we'll just have him walk in the general direction of where we want him to go. You might. No, it might look weird if he's walking straight into a wall. Uh, we'll just have we'll just say print path unsuccessful. And then um we'll give it a wait wait of 2 seconds in that case. So let's go ahead and have this guy walk around once again. Okay. All right, that sucks. Uh, yeah, let's make that further. Uh, we'll do it. I don't know, 50. I don't know this area. I have it so small. We get like a city built or some shit for this. All right, here we go. Come on, buddy. Okay, there we go. All right, he goes inside the house and he's good. So he's gonna wait now, and then he decides to. He decides to get stuck on the goddamn window. Okay, great. Well, this is where that weight is going to come in handy, I guess. Because he's not going to get stuck here forever. Why? Why is this happening? There you go. Okay. Now we're in business. Fuck. Alright, so as you can see, he can navigate through the terrain now pretty efficiently. Uh, the windows, I guess, are a little iffy with him, but... Uh, that's just a quirk of the actual pathfinding. So yeah, I don't know why he's he's getting stuck on the windows like this. Obviously, I have him jumping when he needs to jump. So that's that's super strange. But I guess he will eventually he eventually jumps through it. Okay, well I mean he figures it out eventually. So um this yeah that's a perfect example of why that uh that weight. Hold on, let me pause this. We go inside his script. This weight with the two inside is causing him not to sit there forever so it's gonna wait two seconds and the game's like well oh shit the guy's stuck so we better just continue on with the script and then it regenerates the path then it tells him to jump and then he gets unstuck so i think that's all i got for the uh, pathfinding service today let me know what kind of videos you guys want in the future i was thinking about making more kinds of uh, custom npcs so please like the video, please subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next